I, I think it's finally back to get me. Let me start over. Back to the beginning. I, I used to live in a town in the northeast corner of Louisiana. It's a relative, relatively small town called Lake Providence. Now, I'm only 12 at this time, and I had a few f friends in this town because people didn't like me. But one night, something happened that my slightly quiet life changed. I had... I was having a sleepover with my friend Neil. We decided to mess around with in my sister's room and blame everything that we did on the ghost in the morning to freak her out. I had Neil keep watch at the door so he could run and warn me if something was coming. All was going well until I heard Neil call me. His voice was shaky. Mackenzie, come here. I, I need you. I stopped what I was doing and went to the door. What is it, Neil? He just stood there, pointing out to the hall. I followed his finger, but what I saw scared the hell out of me. There in my hall was a dark figure that appeared to be wearing a cloak, just standing there, facing away from us, slightly slouched. It must have been around seven feet tall, and its cloak seemed to be tattered and worn in some places. First I thought, holy shit, someone broke into our house. But then I realized that we would have heard it coming in because my grandfather locks all the doors and windows. Just as I realized this, it slowly turns around, so slowly, you could barely tell it was moving. It, it had no facial features there. It was just a black hole where its face should have been. I thought maybe its hood from the cloak was just making its face seconds or a few minutes before it vanished. Too, f too frightened to say anything, Neil and I went to bed. We, when we woke up and the next morning, tried to play the entire thing off as a dream. But I just couldn't get the image of it standing there watching us out of my head. My day went pretty normal aside from what I couldn't shake this feeling I was being watched. Even with all that happening, John and I decided to go and explore the woods near my house. It was a stupid idea, but something was drawing me towards those woods. I can't explain what it was, but I just had to go into them and explore. As we entered the woods, the image of the thing we saw last night flashed in my head. I laughed uneasily, but continued on trying not to think about it. Neil and I probably been in the woods for at least an hour and we had no idea where we were but we decided just to sit on a nearby stump and eat some lunch I packed as we were eating I was starting to notice something there was no sound in the woods no birds no wind rustling no leaves no animals scurrying across the ground it was quiet way too quiet. Then I saw it. At first, it was just a blurry shape. Then I noticed out in the corner of my eye. It darted behind trees so fast that it looked like a dark blob moving from tree to tree. I thought maybe there was some kind of animal watching us, but I was sadly mistaken. It was that thing again. It slowly moved out from behind a tree moved as if it was floating, never making a sound. Again, it stared at us, never speaking or anything. 
I decided to try to speak to it. What do you want? Why are you following us? My voice was shaky. I sounded as if I was going to cry. I honestly regret speaking to it, because just as I finished asking my question, something happened that haunts me to this day. It was as if everyone in the world was whispering at once. The noise was deafening, yet it was so quiet. After a while, my ears stopped ringing. I looked over to see if Neil was okay, but he was gone. Only then did I notice that it was dark out. It was cold out, and I was covered in something wet and sticky. I was scared and stupidly called out to, for Neil. Neil? Neil? Where are you? I was cut off. My whispers were far less there than had been before. It was time that I was able to make out a few of them. Not here. No hope. It wants you. He's coming. Run! Suddenly, they stopped and I could see the thing began darting from tree to tree. I was frozen with fear and realized I, what I was covered in. It was Neil's blood. Suddenly, without any thought, I burst to a full sprint within a few minutes. I was in my front yard. There were police cars in the driveway where lights nearly blinded me. Suddenly I heard Neil's voice, but it was somewhat a lower pitch. Neil, and it seemed to echo. Look at me. Come back. Against my better judgment, I turned around and saw Neil's face. But it wasn't Neil. It was that thing again. But it was covered in blood that had been Neil's face. I was in sort of a trance, and I couldn't turn away. I stood there staring at Neil's bloody face. The next thing I knew, I was being shaken by a police officer. I snapped down my trance and looked around. I was still standing in my front yard, facing the woods. Though after the police questioned me, everything just stopped. The things, the thing never came back, and I didn't hear the voices. But that didn't stop me from moving. I now live in Massachusetts. It's been two years since Neil died. No one knows what happened to him but me. They searched the woods for months and never found his body. I can hear the whispers going louder.